Six ways to lose fat faster. The first one is to not waste time on unnecessarily lengthy YouTube introductions. Number one, this is my favorite one, build muscle. Of course, we are talking long-term here, but we should really be thinking long-term and doing our future selves a favor. So it might not help you right now, but maybe next year or the year after that, or really any time in your future that you fancy losing a bit of fat, sharpening up, having some muscle is going to make that a lot easier. And I mean a lot easier. I am truly astounded with what I can get away with. The level of just despicable gluttony that I can stoop to, while still maintaining some kind of definition, it genuinely blows my mind and I'm not even that big, I don't even have that much muscle. Having more muscle burns more calories when you're doing nothing and it burns a lot more calories when you're doing something. So when you combine having muscle with doing stuff, it's really pretty easy to burn calories and the added bonus is that it's not just easier to stay lean, it's easier to appear lean. So maybe you won't even have to actually lose as much as well. All right, I understand that that's not gonna help the current situation if you're sat there with pigs in blankets running through your veins. So I promise the rest of them will be more immediate fixes. Number two, you know what, before I do number two, let me just save you some time and clarify something. The only actual way to speed up fat loss is to increase the size of the caloric deficit, i.e. the difference between what you consume and what you burn, right? That's the only way. So everything in this list is really just an example of a mechanism for doing that. Everything will come down to eat less, move more, or both. That's the bottom line. The point is, if they're decent examples I give you today, they won't make you feel like you're eating less or feel like you're really moving more because that takes effort and we like things to be easy. Let's continue. Number two, exercise selection. Obviously, I could say easy stuff like just do more cardio and that is an option, but it's too obvious to really bring anyone any scrap of value. One change you can make if you happen to dislike cardio but enjoy lifting is the exercises that comprise your resistance workouts. Generally, more taxing exercises are gonna burn more calories both whilst you do them and they'll come with a higher recovery cost. Yes, compound exercises burn more than isolation exercises, but if you really wanna seek out the most demanding exercises, you want those that A, allow you to move a heavy load, and B, require a lot of core bracing and or stabilization. Now, not all compound movements are created equal. Machines definitely do have their benefits when it comes to building muscle, partly precisely because they require less stabilization and allow you to focus on the muscle you're training more, but they won't have the same calorie cost as free weight exercises. A squat is gonna burn more calories than a leg press. A freestanding T-bar row is gonna burn more than a plate-loaded row. Free bar presses more than chest or shoulder press machines, etc., etc. If you wanna go one further though, you can choose unilateral exercises where you either perform alternate reps left right left right or you perform one set with one side and then one set with the other side things like bulgarian split squats or walking lunges are really good examples and this of course is not rocket science you're essentially doing double the reps and you might say yeah but on using half the weight. Well, first of all, that's not true because there's this thing called the bilateral deficit, which is kind of weird phenomenon where the weight we're able to move with one limb is often higher than half of what we can do with two. So you're relatively stronger with one limb than you are with both. The reason for that's debated. Some say it's neurological, some refute that. I definitely don't know for sure, but it certainly is true. And a simple way to test that is to go to failure, curling two dumbbells at the same time. And then when you hit failure, see if you can carry on when you switch to performing reps alternately. Chances are you will be able to do a few more reps. Beyond just the weight you use, each rep requires you to brace, stabilize your core and maintain form, which adds to your total energy requirements. In short, just do unsupported T-bar rows, walking lunges, Bulgarian split squats, alternate dumbbell shoulder press, you get the idea. Number three, high satiety foods. I won't labor this point because pretty much every fitness video since the dinosaurs has mentioned this. Just make some common sense swaps, right? So you can feel just as full or fuller on fewer calories. So some key staples of a high satiety diet include boiled white potatoes, porridge oats with a low calorie milk, berries, apples, most fruits really, except like banana and coconut, uh, pretty much anything high in fiber, broccoli, kale, sprouts, basically all greens, basically all veg, less sweet potato, more butternut squash or pumpkin type veg, low or non-fat dairy like yogurt, cottage cheese, etc. lean meat and fish, right? Essentially, most stuff that most people should be eating anyway. Things that aren't particularly filling for the calories, pretty much anything processed, dried fruits, things that have had the moisture removed, pasta, rice, noodles, etc. 
Now, I'm not saying never eat those things, just that you won't feel as full for the number of calories that you consume. Number four, sleep more. Now, I do wish that it was as easy as just deciding to get more sleep. I am fully aware that it's not good. Sleep hygiene is something that you really have to focus on, put some planning into, and really persevere with to actually make any solid, lasting progress. I also understand and accept that people have jobs, commitments, families, etc. Obviously, don't come at me. I speak generally, so apply everything I say to the context of your own existence, right? That's basic. If you can improve your sleep quality and or quantity, then it's gonna make losing fat easier in a couple of different ways. Firstly, you should find that it has a positive effect on your training. You'll be able to have better workouts, lift more or run for longer and burn more calories overall, right? Second, it should help with your adherence to your diet. Tiredness typically makes you more prone to snacking. I certainly experienced that personally when I don't sleep enough, which of course isn't gonna help you get shredded faster. Number five, higher NEAT. In a language that people who aren't complete gym nerds would understand, NEAT is just an acronym that describes the calories a person burns through activity that's not typically classed as exercise. For example, if you walk to the shops, that's not exercise, but it does burn and calories and you know if you're somebody who actually tries to describe walking as cardio then I might politely suggest you try something novel once in a while like actually getting out of breath but anyway that's just an example neat encompasses literally everything that you might do that burns calories so just walk journeys you can walk take the dog for an extra run around take the stairs instead of the lift I don't know vacuum your living room more often <laughs> Sorry, that was personal. I'm not saying your house is filthy. I mean, I've never been. And then even things like mentally challenging tasks and actually have quite a caloric demand. It's thought that your brain accounts for about 20% of your energy needs. So obviously I'm not saying like start doing Sudoku and you're gonna get shredded. But if your hobbies generally consist of mentally stimulating things like learning an instrument or playing chess or something, then maybe you'd eventually burn a non-significant number of extra calories, at least versus spending three hours a day on TikTok. That last bit is pure speculation. Number six, go slower. All right, so this one is a little bit backwards, but just hear me out because there is some actual rationale. One of the main things that holds people back and slows down their overall progress is simply adherence. I understand that, you know, people get enthusiastic, new year, new me, David Goggins, basic bitch, self-improvement, Twitter threads. It's all very compelling indeed, but in their naive enthusiasm, people often bite off more than they can chew. They try and go too hard too fast and ultimately end up, you know, knee deep in garlic mayo on a Friday night. If you can avoid taking one step back for every two steps you take forward, then you'll make progress much faster in the long term. The lucky among us might see maybe a hundred years in our lifetime, right? So really, there is no rush, you know what I mean? Better to make some progress every week than fast progress some weeks. So if you find yourself spending large parts of the day hungry when you're a week into your diet, that's a bad sign. You should probably increase your calories in that instance. Setting your calories too low just increases the probability that you'll fall off the wagon and do an impulse supermarket sweep through Greg's one day. And really, you do have to view yourself in terms of probabilities. Don't take for granted the idea that you are in control of yourself. When you look at your plan, you should ask, what's the probability that I'm gonna actually stick to this? Because it's never 100%. I hope I made that point anyway. So I know some of these might be a little bit obscure, but I did wanna provide some kind of insight beyond the obvious stuff, like just get your ass on a treadmill more, which is of course also an option. I hope you found some of it useful. Go forth, achieve your body composition goals. See you later. I see me rolling. Hey, hey, King. Joe Eulenius, my hero!